All right, so in all of these, uh, you would have seen this banner which says, don't vote select. And here is the contradiction about Mumbai votes. Uh, and contrary to the conventional view that democracy is all about numbers and about the number of people who come out to vote, you will see that the recurring theme in this entire idea is the quality of what we are doing. I think voting requires just a finger on which you have a mark and you go and vote. But that allows you to disengage the moment you have finished voting. You feel you are not a voter anymore. Whereas if you select as opposed to electing, you are now responsible for the consequences of the vote that you cast. And while Mumbai, Mumbai in general, after the terror attack in, in uh, 2009, constantly kept telling people to go out and vote, you must, must have heard this campaign message all across Jagore, a lot of other movements across India telling people to go out and vote, no matter who it is. We took a very contrary view, saying that, in fact, it doesn't matter if the voter turnout is 90%, 80%, or if it's 40%. If 90% of the people are going to go out and vote without information, they might select poorer leaders than 40% of the people going out and voting with information. Because eventually democracy is not about how many people go out to vote, it is about the quality of the leaders that you select with your vote. And hence it is important to select and not elect. That essentially is what Mumbai Votes empowers. I'll very quickly take you through the, the vision, mission, and where Mumbai Votes currently stands and what we've enabled in India. Slideshow, right. And do bear with me, uh, some of the formatting might have been lost because of transferring to a system that is actually a better, newer system, mine is an older computer system. All right. Uh, Mr. Obrah pointed out earlier on that what is it that sparks this entire movement? Uh, you know, when in 1998, when I voted for the first time, I felt that somebody needs to come in and change the situation around us, and I've waited till 2004 to, to see if something like this would come up naturally, organically within the system, and unfortunately nothing came up. Six years of waiting, and it was time to vote for the next election, and then it struck us that change will not come if we wait for another person or another time. We are the change we speak, we are the people we've been waiting for. There is no Masiha, there is no Christ, there is no Ram. Mr. Gandhiji is not going to come back. We are the people we've been waiting for, and this was very, very crisply articulated by President Obama during his campaign and it inspired us so much that we use this as a way of conveying the idea that unless we ourselves at an individual level act, nothing around us is going to change. So the vision of Mumbai Votes uh, or the Informed Voter Project, because I don't want people to think of this just as being a Mumbai specific event uh, or a movement, is to usher in a new age of informed participation in democracy and public life in Mumbai and the democratic universe beyond, to decimate guesswork from public decision making and opinion building among citizens in India, thereby, and this is the essence of it, incentivizing progressive politics through relentless public scrutiny and thus spawning a trajectory from the world's largest democracy to an evolved democracy. So what is the mission? That is what we want to achieve. What have we actually done to enable this. What I liked a lot about Mr. Anand's uh, you know, uh, speech and talk here today was that he didn't just talk about the problems of corruption, that we need to fight it. You provided a tool, a very simple tool for people to actually start making a change. Everybody knows the problem exists, but what are we going to do to enable you to participate? So I want to spend most of my time now talking less about you know, what we did to come to this point, but talk more about what it is that we are now trying to enable with what we have built. What you will see on Mumbai Watch, which I will uh, briefly take you to right now, is we've developed, nourished, and magnified the most comprehensive resource for rigorously researched, objectively analyzed, and efficiently communicated information about India's elected representatives ever, demo ever erected in India's democratic history, where citizens can receive reliable, unbiased, perceptive, and performance-based information related to the representatives that democratically vote into power. Okay, so what do you get on MumbaiVotes.com? Currently, if you go to Mumbai Votes, you will get to know everything that you want to know to measure the promises and performance of elected representatives in India. If you think about it visually, think about measurement as being a ruler. This is about placing a ruler on the person who rules you. 
about measuring where this person stands compared to what they themselves promised. Earlier on when Mumbai Watch started off, we were wondering how do you go about assessing a human being which essentially is a qualitative entity, it's not a quantitative entity. And we came up with this very naive idea that we will come up with a yardstick, a moral yardstick, that if you indulge in corruption, you should get a negative one point. If you indulge in communalization of the community, you get a negative one point. If you indulge in progressive politics, you get a positive one point. We came up with this methodology, and frankly, it was very, very flawed. Because every elected representative or every candidate can say, Mr. Gilani and Mr. Mumbai votes, you come from a certain standpoint. If you feel that slum development is negative, you're going to look at me negatively. If you believe you're from the upper middle class and upper middle class developmental agendas need to be promoted, you will look at me positively, which will eventually lead to people discrediting the movement because they feel that your yardstick is not representative. So we were stuck in a quandary as to how do we go about analyzing elected representatives and giving people objective information. So we came up with this idea. Dr. Alok Thakur is in fact from Kolkata. He told us that you can never hold a person responsible, even if it's an elected representative, responsible for your morality or for your moral agenda. But you can certainly hold them accountable for what they themselves promised. So we moved away from this contentious idea of saying that communalization of community is bad. If you have actually promised this in your manifesto, it, you better stand for it and you better make sure that you communalize the community around you. It is controversial, but what we are saying is that as long as you got voted into power, the people agree with your agenda. We are only going to hold you accountable for what you yourself promised. Of course, to drive away from complete uh, controversial areas, such as, for example, if you want to do something to to go against the constitution. For example, in Mumbai, there is a political party which says that every job that gets created by the government should first go to Maharashtrians. Now, yes, we could say that we will hold you accountable to make sure that every job does go to Maharashtrians after you get elected. However, there is a non-constitutional element. You have gone against the constitution of the country. What we first do is make sure that the promise that you've made is in alignment with the constitution of the country. Every promise that is against the constitution of the country, first of all, gives you a certain criminal record because you've murdered the constitution of the country. So there are certain checks and balances, but overall the idea is this, that you will be held accountable for any promise that you make, even if you feel it's ludicrous. Promises made by MPs, MLAs and corporators and candidates are captured through video interviews, through newspaper articles and manifestos. Now I spoke to you a little bit about the electronic Raddiwala concept. Yes, we all read Times of India and DNA and Hindustan Times. We have it in our memory for a couple of days. But wouldn't you love it if every important piece of information that these newspapers plus other local newspapers which you might never read, Hindi newspapers, Marathi newspapers, Urdu newspapers, all the relevant information was available to you in a succinct manner on the profile page of every elected representative which you could check. Mumbai votes has every newspaper article that was ever researched, or, or sorry, ever published since January 1, 2004, about every MP, MLA and corporator in Mumbai, and continuing to do so in about 16 newspapers, so that nothing leaves the net of information. How do we now go around assessing performance? Now, this is the critical component of our work that we do. Every article that is published in media sources is compared numerically with the promises that they have made using a process called coding. There is a social science research methodology where if you have a sufficient number of people looking at a qualitative piece of information, it is possible to say whether it is consistent with your own declarations or it is inconsistent with your own declarations. Now you might say that if you had 10 people and some of them had political biases, they might see the same article or the same piece of information as being consistent or inconsistent. What we do to bring about objectivity is a thing called intercoder reliability. This again is bringing an analytics into something which is primarily qualitative. If 10 people look at the same piece of information and if 8 of them agree that something is consistent versus something is inconsistent, that gives credibility to the entire process. So we actually measure the error or the de deviation between the opinions of various people who analyze this information. 
during elections, so this is the information that you get while the person is elected, but what do you do now once the elections are around the corner and elected representatives are now standing for election versus other candidates? During elections, we provide detailed video interviews, profiles, and again, every piece of media information that was ever published about them since January 1st, 2004, so that you can go ahead and make an informed choice at the time of elections. The portal. Now, without getting into the presentation, I'd actually like to take you to, to Mumbai Votes and show you what this portal looks like in live action. Do I need to minimize this? That might not be connected to the internet, is it? Which one? The, uh, the website. Okay. No, the, the website. I uh, was connected to the internet earlier. Okay, here we go. Let the guessing cease, let the truth unleash, uh, is what you read right on uh, the home page of, of the movement. Currently, if you see, we are currently tracking, tracking 1,445 politicians in India, most of them from Mumbai, and a total of 5,776 articles. Now, you might find that ratio to be very, very poor. Imagine if you had only five articles to choose from or to learn from about every politician. That is certainly not sufficient information. And when I was telling, uh, you know, or commenting on, on the fact that the four pillars of democracy have failed us, if you go to Times of India's website today and type in Milind Devra or Priyadat, who are the two most prominent MPs from Mumbai, versus type in Salman Khan or Katrina Kaif, the number of articles that you're going to get about the latter versus the former, there is absolutely no competition. Through our process of trying to bring in transparency into democracy, we have learned that the very process of bringing information needs to be transformed so that you get more relevant, more meaningful information that you can actually act upon when it's time to go vote. All right. Uh, I don't know if you guys have actually uh, know of any of the MPs in Mumbai, but the only way I can demonstrate the power of what, what we're all about is to actually take you to the profile page of some of the MPs of Mumbai to show you what this, uh, this movement enables. <coughs> 